بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين وعلى آله وصحابته أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala To him belong all the praise He is worthy of, of being praised And we send our salutations and greetings Upon the final messenger Muhammad And his followers This is a continuation of the reading from the book, the classical work of the esteemed scholar of Islam who is well known among the people of the truth, Imam Ibn al-Qayyim. Uh, this is a continuation from <clears throat> the reading in the book Al-Wabil as meaning the heavy downfall, heavy rain Min al from the pure statements <clears throat> And in the last video We talk about how the reward of an action differs from one person to another meaning two people can do the same action and they can be on completely different levels and all of that is based on the intention the sincerity and the following of the way of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam In today's video or tonight's video <clears throat> The topic is going to be about Muhbitatu Al-A'mal Meaning The nullifiers of actions Muhbitat are the falsifiers you can translate as the falsifiers or the nullifiers or the, or the invalidators of actions it is or there are the things that when you fall into them they can ruin the good that you have done and render them null and void and this is something this is a chapter that every Muslims should be keen upon to learn and understand So without any further delay, we're going to start reading right away from the book Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said al-A'mal The modifiers of actions He said al-A'mal The falsifiers are the invalidators of deeds and that which destroys them and that which destroys them are are too many to be counted that which render an action, a good action, not and void are many and due to the multitude of these nullifiers it cannot be they cannot be counted and then he said لَيْسَ شَأْنُ فِي الْعَمَلِ إِنَّمَا الشَّأْنُ فِي هِفْضِ الْعَمَلِ مِمَّا يُفْسِدُهُ وَيُحْبِطُهُ Meaning, the true essence is not the action itself. The true essence is not the action is itself. Rather, وَلَكِنَّ 
But the true essence, the true essence is in preserving the deed, the action, from that which spoils it and falsifies it. Meaning, that which is more important than the action is preserving the action from being nullified. Preserving the deed, a good action, is more important than doing the action itself. And then he said, for example, showing off, Riyah in Arabic means to show off, to do something, to seek the attention of people. He said, even if it is a little bit of Riyah, it is going to mollify and spoil the action. And Riyah has many doors or many chapters that cannot be, that are not possible to count. There are many doors of Ria. There are many entries of Ria. There are too many to be counted. So that is one. From the nullifiers of actions is showing up, doing an action to seek attention from the creation. And then he said, وَقَوْلُ الْعَمَلِ غَيْرُ مُقَيَّدٍ غَيْرُ مُقَيَّدٍ بِاتِّبَاعِ السُنَّةِ أَيْرًا مُوْجِبٌ لِكَوْنِهِ بَاطِلًا Likewise, when the action is not in accordance with the sunnah, meaning the way of the Prophet وسلم, that can lead to the action being invalid. So we have number two here. From the nullifiers of actions or deeds or deeds. One that Ibn Qayyim mentioned is to do the deed to show off. Secondly, not following the guidance of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then he said, وَالْمَنُّ بِهِ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى بِقَلْبِهِ مُفْسِدٌ لَهَا From the nullifiers of good actions is that a person, you the servant, you do the action, but within your heart, you're feeling within yourself that you are doing Allah a favor. You do the action, but with inside yourself amazed, you think within your heart that you're doing Allah a favor. Within your heart, you're mentioning within your heart that I'm doing Allah a favor by doing this action. This and this can also nullify the action because. We are the ones that are in need of Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Fatir, Ya ayyuhan nasu antum al-fuqara'u ila Allah, wallahu huwa al-waniyu al-hameed. Allah the Almighty, he says, O mankind, it is you that are in need of Allah. It is you that are in need of Allah and Allah is the one who is independent, self-sufficient, absolutely. He is in need of no one, nothing. And He is worthy of being praised. So you doing an action, you should know that Allah has done you a favor by giving you the success to do a good deed. So, 
doing the deed and counting that deed within your heart, even if you don't speak with your tongue within your heart, you're counting that deed as a favor you're doing for Allah, that can also lead to the action being nullified. That's number three that Imam Ibn al mentioned. And then he says, وَكَذَلِكَ Likewise, الْمَنُّ بِالصَّدَقَةِ وَالْمَعْرُوفِ وَالْبِرِّ وَالْإِحْسَانِ وَالصِّلَةِ مُفْسِدٌ لَهَا مُفْسِدٌ لَهَا كَمَا قَالَ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لَا تُبْطِلُوا صَدَقَاتِكُمْ Ibn al Qayyim he mentioned likewise, he said, likewise, counting al manu bi sadaqa, counting your sadaqa, mentioning your sadaqa, and counting your good deeds, your kindness, your ties mending, you asila, your mending ties. Whether it is the ties of kinship or that which is similar to it. You're counting all of that. You counting that has a favor and keeping on reminding others of the good that you've done for them. This can also nullify or invalidate the deed or the action. And then he brought the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah in Surah Al-Baqarah ayah 264 Allah is calling upon the believers all believers, all you who have believed, all you who have believed, do not nullify, do not render null and void, do not invalidate your charity, your sadaqa, which is a good deed from the best of good actions. As it comes in the other, in the saying of Umar, he said that it, was mentioned, it is mentioned to him that the good deeds, tadabaha yawm al qiyamah. And Ibn al mentioned that in this book under the chapter, The Virtues of Charity. Umar ibn al Khattab, he said that the good deeds are going to boast. On the day of judgment, and then sadaqa, charity, is going to come out and say, I am the best of you. Charity is going to come out on the day of judgment among all of the other deeds and claim that it is the best. So there is no doubt that charity is from the best of action. However, if you are not careful, you will be like a person who is pouring water into a bucket that has a hole within it. We call it the leaking bucket. You're pouring, you're pouring water, but there is a hole. So what you're supposed to do is to fix that hole so that when you put water inside the bucket, it is not going to drain out. So the person who gives charity and remind people of his good deeds and remind the, the recipient or the beneficiary, keeping on reminding the person that I am the one who gave you this, that can nullify your charity. And this example applied to you like a leaking bucket. You're pouring water into a leaking bucket or a leaking cup. So doing that is going to render the charity null and void. Ibn al-Qayyim, may Allah have mercy on him, he said, 
وأكثر الناس ما عندهم خبا من السيئات التي تحبط تحبط الحسنات. Many people have no knowledge and experience of the sins or the evil deeds or the evil deeds that can spoil or modify the good deeds. <clears throat> But this is not befitting. Rather, what is this befitting? What is befitting is that a Muslim should be aware of those actions that can nullify his good deeds. So he said many people are unaware, are not experienced regarding the sins or the, the evil deeds that can nullify the good deeds. And then he says, وَقَدْ قَالَ تَعَالَى And verily, indeed, Allah, He has mentioned in His mighty book, the final revelation, the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse or ayah number two. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la tarfa'u aswatakum fawqa sawtin nabi wa la tajaharu lahu bil qawli kajahri ba'adikum li ba'adin an tahbata a'malukum wa antum la tash'aru Allah says, all you who have believed, all you who have believed, don't, do not raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet. Do not raise your voices over the voice of the Prophet. And don't be loud to him, the Prophet, in speech. Like the way you are loud to one another, or else your deeds will become invalid without you knowing. If you don't pay attention to this, your deed is going to be rendered null and void without you perceiving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns the believers from spoiling their deeds. By being loud to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as they are loud to one another. And this is not apostasy. Rather, it is a sin that can it is a sin that invalidates the good deeds without the individual perceiving. It is a sin that invalidates the good deeds without the individual perceiving. <clears throat> And then Ibn al-Qayyim says, فَمَا أَظَّنُّ بِمَنْ قَدَّمَ على قول رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وهديه وطريقه قول غيره وهديه وطريقه أليس هذا قد حبط عمله وهو لا يشعر Then what do you think? Then what think you about the one who puts a head of the same a head of the same is the guidance and the way of the messenger 
the sayings, the guidance, or the way of another being. A person who gives precedence, precedence or priority to the sayings, the guidance, and the way of another person over the sayings and the guidance and the way of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ibn al-Qayyim said, Alaysa hadha qad habibu amaluhu wa huwa la yash'u Has not this person invalidated his action without perceiving a person who intentionally gives priority to another human being saying or another human being guidance or another human being way over the way of the real role model Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has not this person invalidated his action without perceiving Ibn al-Qayyim may Allah have mercy on him he said wa min hadha and from this angle from this angle is referring to meaning the invalidators or the nullifiers of the actions he has mentioned so far five of them let me just review them quick before we uh, continue the first one that he mentioned is uh, showing up the second one is not following the guidance or the will of the prophet the third one is within your heart being amazed thinking with inside that you're doing a law of favor the fourth one that he mentioned is counting and mentioning your charity to the recipient and the fifth one that he mentioned so the fourth one is mentioning the charity to the recipient as and counting your favor over the recipient only Allah is supposed to do that the fifth one is the fifth one is raising your voice over the messenger or giving precedence to another person saying over the saying of the messenger so that's five and then he said from this angle meaning the angle of the invalidators from the invalidators are what the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the hadith regarding the person who abandons the salatul asr which is the middle prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says in surah al-baqarah hafidhu ala salawati wa salati al-wusta wa qumu lillahi qaliteen be diligent and preserve the salawat meaning the prayers the obligatory prayers pray them on time preserve their time and especially the middle prayer and stand before Allah in obedience in the middle prayer there are many ahadith that mention that it is salat al asr without a doubt so he said from this angle of the invalidators is the saying of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in sahih al-bukhari from the hadith of Buraida ibn al-hasir radiyallahu anhu the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said من ترك صلاة العصر فقد حبط عمله that whosoever abandons صلاة العصر has indeed invalidated his action whosoever abandons صلاة العصر has indeed nullified his deed and then Ibn al-Qayyim said ومن هذا and from these invalidators is also the saying of the mother of the believers, Aisha radiallahu anha, and may Allah be pleased with her and her father, when she said to Zayd ibn Arqam, may Allah be pleased with him radiallahu anhu, Lamma ba'a bil'ina, when Zayd 
Ibn Arqam engaged in a transaction called Bayt al Aina. When Zayd ibn Arqam engaged in the transaction called Bayt al Aina, Aisha said, Inna hu qad aba qala jihadahu ma'a Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam illa an yatuba. She said, Verily, he, meaning Zayd, has nullified his jihad, meaning the reward for his jihad with the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by engaging in this prohibited transaction, Bayt al Aina, unless he repents. And what is Bayt al Aina? Example, I'm going to give an example. For example, an example of Bayt al Aina. I say I am selling a car to a friend of mine. A friend of mine come and said that he wants to buy my car for ten thousand dollars. So I sell my car to him for ten thousand dollars in ten installments. Ten installments meaning every month. He's going to pay me $1,000 for 10 months. $1,000 for 10 months. So my car, I'm selling it to this friend of mine for $10,000. I gave him 10 months, every month $1,000. Then after some time, before the payment is over, Let's say, for example, two weeks after I sold the car to him, I said to him, hey man, hey man, let me buy it from you for $8,000. Or he come back to me, he himself, he said, hey man, listen, I bought the car from you for $10,000 for 10 months, every month $1,000, but I can give it to you for $8,000. Give me $8,000 right now. You take the car and you have $2,000 profit. And then I agree to that. So what is this? This is playing trick with the Sharia. It is playing trick. What is this? What is, this is what the call in, the call in Arabic. Here. Playing trick to make that which is haram halal. To make that which is impermissible, permissible. Because in reality, I am loaning this person $8,000. He needs $8,000. But he doesn't want to come in the way that is going to be obvious that it is riba. Because if he come to me and say, hey, loan me $8,000 and I'll give you $10,000 back, or I say, he come to me loan, and say, loan me $8,000. I say, you have to add $2,000 interest to it. That is going to be obvious riba. So instead of doing it the obvious way, we, play, we are playing trick. This is an example. So I'll say to him, okay, come, buy my car for $10,000. And then I buy it back from you for, for $8,000. And then you still have 10 months to pay me. In reality, I am just loaning this person, I am loaning, borrowing this person $8,000 and the person or this friend of mine is going to pay me back $10,000 with $2,000 interest. This is called riba, but it is done in the reverse way. So we do it in a way that is not so obvious. I am going to sell my car to him. For $10,000, no interest, no interest, brother, $10,000. 10 months, no interest. Yeah, it looks as though it is pure halal. 10 months, no interest. Then after two weeks, hey, $8,000 cash, give me my car. Okay, yeah, give me the $8,000. So he's going to take that $8,000 and use it for his own benefit. And then pay me in 10 months, $10,000. Which is riba, because there is two thousand dollars interest. This is an example of bayt al aina. It is haram, and this is why the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ida tabayatum bil aina." 
if you engage in ina, and then you engage in uh, uh, farming, and you leave off striving in the way of Allah, Allah is going to place upon you humiliation, and He is not going to remove it from you until you return. Until you return to your religion, it's a warning. So, when Zayd ibn Arqam engaged in Bayt al Aina, Aisha said to him, Aisha said regarding him, In verily, Zayd ibn Arqam has invalidated his jihad with the Messenger of Allah unless he repents. And Ibn al-Qayyim he said, وَلَيْسَ التَّبَايُعُ بِالْعِينَ تِرِدَّةِ Engaging in Bayt al-Ina is not apostasy. وَإِنَّمَا رَعَيَتُهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ مَعْصِيَةً The most that can be said about Bayt al-Ina is that it is an act of disobedience. It is a sin. It is sinful. وَنَسَفَ مَعَرِفَةُ مَا يُفْسِدُ الْأَعْمَالِ فِي حَالِ فِي حَالِ وَقُوعِهَا وَيُبْطِلُهَا وَيُحْبِطُهَا بَعْدَ وَقُوعِهَا مِنْ أَهَمِّ مَا يَنْبَغِي أَنْ يُفَتِّشَ عَلَيْهِ الْعَبْدُ وَيَحْرِشْ Ala amalihi wa yahdharuhu. He says, so knowing that which invalidates the deeds, knowing that which invalidates the action, at the time that the action is been, at the time that the action is going on, at the time that you're doing the action, and knowing that which spoils it and falsifies it after it is done, بَعْدَ وَقُوعِهَا He said, having this knowledge is from that which is most important, that the servant should be watchful of. And the servant should be keen upon his actions and cautious of losing its reward. Knowing that which nullifies the deed at the time that you're doing the deed. And what can nullify the deed after the deed has been done and over with. And preserving this deed is from the most important of things that a Muslim she gave importance to. It's from the most important of things that the servant should be watchful of and keen upon. And then he said in the next paragraph, it has been mentioned in a noon text that in فينتقل من ديوان السر إلى ديوان العلانية ثم يصير في ذلك الديوان على حسب العلانية فإن تعدد به للسمعة وطلب الجاه والمنزلة عند غير الله تعالى أبطله كما لو فعله لذلك كما لو فعله لذلك أنه فعله 
لذلك الغرض Ibn al-Qayyim, he said, it has been mentioned in a text, a known text, that the servant will do an act of worship in private for Allah, meaning for the sake of Allah, sirrun, without anyone knowing but Allah. لا يطلعوا عليه أهد إلا الله This is from the best of action. Action that is done privately, a deed that is done privately between you and Allah alone. This is why it comes in the hadith from those that are going to be covered under the shade of Allah on the day of judgment when the sun is going to come closer to the head of the people. When some people are going to be sweating and swimming in their sweat from those that are going to be covered and protected from the heat on that day under the shade of Allah, from amongst them is a person a man or a woman that gives charity. And the person hides the charity. To the point that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand spent in charity. So secret and private. Only him and Allah knows about this charity. No one knows. So these that are done in private, when the deed is done in private, the, the person becomes more sincere. It improves the sincerity of the servant. So Ibn al-Qayyim said it has been mentioned in the text that the servant will do an act of worship in private for Allah and noon without anyone knowing but Allah the Most High. Then what is going to happen? Then he will begin talking about this action. So what happens when you start talking about your good deeds that you do or that you have done in private? When you start talking about it, it starts to become public. And so that action, that act of, that act of worship, that act of worship will move from the private record, the private record that is only between you and Allah, to the public record. So the private record of deeds are the deeds that reach the peak of sincerity to the point that no one knows them but Allah and you the person who have done the deed. So if you start talking about it, it's going to move from that private record, mean the one is here. In Alaniya to the public record, people are going to start to become aware. Then Ibn al Qayyim said, then the deed will stay in that record, meaning in the public record. So it's no longer a private action because people are starting to know about it. So it's going to be on that public record on the level that is in accordance with the publicity of the deed. Meaning the deeds that are in the public record are on different levels. Some deeds are public, but not too public. Other deeds are public to the point that everyone knows about it. So it was going to be on a level that is in accordance with the public city of the deed. So now the deed has transferred from the private record to the public record. People are aware of it. And now in the public record is there, when you, the servant, speaks about it, about your deed, your good deed, 
to attain praise or to seek status and prestige in the way Allah Ta'ala you seeking praise, status, and prestige from other than Allah. What is going to happen? If you do that, if you force into that, then the deed is going to be mollified. It is going to be nullified in that case, and it is going to be as though you have done the deed for that purpose. For which purpose? It is going to be as though you have done the deed from the beginning. You did the deed to attain praise from people. It will be as though you have done the deed to seek status and prestige from the people, not from Allah. This is what is going to happen. When you start sincerely, and then you start talking about your deed, it goes to the public record, and then you start talking about it so that people can praise you to seek fame and status and position. If you do that, then the deed that you started in the beginning sincerely becomes spoiled and damaged and nullified. And it is going to be as though you did the deed for that purpose, meaning to show off, to seek fame, to seek status. This is why it comes in the hadith of Qudasi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, I am the most independent, the most self-sufficient from needing any partner. From needing any associate, whosoever does an action associating other than me, along with me, whosoever does an action associating an entity with Allah, Allah I will abandon him and that which he has associated with me. Meaning, Allah is not going to accept that action. Allah is going to leave you by yourself. Allah is going to abandon you. So shirk is the greatest act of disobedience. It's the greatest of sins. That if a person dies upon it, the person remains in the hellfire. So we should be careful not to do our deed in the beginning sincerely and then shaitan comes to us and fool us until we publicize our deeds and then shaitan is going to come to us and beautify for us our evil actions and then we will start to seek fame or to seek status with our good actions instead of doing it sincerely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we're going to stop here. And then in the next video, we will get into the next paragraph which is also very important. That is where he's gonna start talking about if it is said or someone someone were to ask if this person repents from this action, <clears throat> from this sin that has nullified the good action, if the person repents, will the person get back the good deeds that he did prior to the sin? Will the person get back the good deeds that he did 
that became nullified due to the sin if he repents. Inshallah, we will get into that in the next class. صلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين والحمد لله رب العالمين